Good morning all. I'm going to play with this uh, super capacitor uh, array today. So I thought the first thing I'd do is start scraping a little bit of uh, this coating off of the board to expose the copper. And then I'm going to solder a blue LED on there. So I've done the first one. Let's do the second one. Just got to get the screwdriver flat to the board so that it Exposes a bit of copper there, that'll do. And then on the other side, I'm not actually on the capacitor contacts because uh, the capacitor connection is there. That then goes through a MOSFET to uh, this arm of all these resistors. So it's only if I short out that to that that there could be an issue. I don't really know whether these are going to be uh, very well charged. I suppose I could put a DVM across them. Actually, let's do that. Uh, right, DC volts. Let's check one of these capacitors. Let's check this one. And the voltage is, oh, quite low. Uh, 388 millivolts. Let's go across two of them. 754 millivolts. Let's go across all of them, plus to minus. And we've got, oh, almost exactly two volts for the whole array. Well, that should take 16.2 volts maximum. Uh, across those six capacitors. Right, let's carry on scraping the copper. All right, seems it's easier to do it this way around. Just want to expose a little copper square there on each of these six uh, protection circuits so that I can put my little blue LED on there because I like to see when these protection circuits switch on because there's no indication uh, without these LEDs. And uh, it's something I think is important to see. Well, I'll just finish that off. Right, let's uh, put a bit of solder on these exposed copper areas, uh, which is where I'm gonna tack on my LEDs. And then uh, these are quite close together, so I don't need to bend the legs on the blue LEDs, just cut them short and solder them onto these little solder pads. So how's this going to work? I think the uh, flat of the LED, which is on the right here, will go to negative on the capacitor because when that MOSFET turns on, then this, these resistors will be just directly across the capacitor. So we want positive on the plus and uh, the flat cathode, anode on the plus and the flat, which is cathode on the minus. So let's solder those on now. Right, there are my uh, six blue LEDs soldered across these uh, resistors. So they should light up, and I can see that from the top, they should light up whenever one of these uh, protection circuits kicks in. Now I'm sort of working out how to fix uh, a socket on here for the solar panel. I've got a spade terminal here which can go on the negative, a uh, big thick piece of wire on there. And then I think what I'll do is I'll put a fuse, uh, I think there's a 10 amp inline fuse in here, or uh, well, there's something in there. These are a bit thin and weedy, but to be honest, I'm not sure, I'm not really that bothered whether this wire blows or the fuse blows. I just want something thin to blow if there's a dead short. So I should be able to run that down to the far end and attach it to the positive somewhere. Let's see how we go with that. Right, so I've got a 2.1 millimeter connector, a negative through to the negative connection on the PCB, positive going through one of these fuses uh, to the positive connection. I just scraped a bit of the coating away there and soldered that on. So now I can plug my solar panel in and charge this thing up. Um, the only problem is the sun's gone in, so that might take longer than it would have done earlier on. Right, here's my setup. Um, there's the solar panel. I'm pretty sure it's 15 watts, but I'll check that in a moment. So that's plugged into the supercapacitor PCB via the 2.1 millimeter socket. And I've got a DVM on that PCB uh, showing the voltage, and it's 3.2 volts and climbing. So I'm going to wait till that gets up to about, well, 16.2, uh, 
or a bit beyond and then those LEDs should start coming on. Right, this is the label on the back of the panel and it's a Shenzhen Apo Light High Tech Limited. PM, Power Max, 15 watts. Uh, VMP, it looks like 11.5 but it's going to be 17.5. Uh, IMP, that looks like 0.2 amps, but it's going to be a lot more than that. Um, what would that be? Uh, right, looking at that more closely, that looks like 0 0.8 amps, which I guess sounds about right. Right, there's a little bit of uh, hazy sunshine now, and the voltage is up to 5 volts, so there's a little way to go yet. Uh, I'll just have to wait. Right, so let's, um, oh, that's up at 6.3 volts now. Let's uh, work out how much power will be dissipated in these resistors. Uh, power is V squared over R. So when these are at full voltage and the protection circuits come on, that'll be 2.7 volts. So it'll be 2.7 times 2.7 is that um, divided by the resistance. So that's four 10 ohm resistors in parallel, that's 2.5 ohms, 2.5 equals, is that right? Uh, yeah, I think that's right, so it's 2.9 watts per set of four resistors, so it's that times six is the total current, uh, is 17 and a half watts, and since that solar panel is only 15 watts, and that's under maximum sun conditions, then these resistors should be able to burn off that whole 15 watts um, and protect the uh, supercapacitor board from going over voltage. Right, before the voltage on this thing gets too high, um, I want to solder on my buck boost converter. I've scraped a couple of positions, so I'm going to solder that on. But I want to put a fuse holder in here. So I've got this one with a 10 amp fuse. Um, I'll replace the red wire with that and solder it on. Right, there we are. There's the uh, buck boost connected with a fuse. Uh, the fault light is on because the voltage on here is lower than the battery protect circuit on here. I can probably uh, adjust that by turning this. Yeah, there we go. So the red light has gone off. The blue light has come on indicating that the output is on and my little light bulb is on. I'll probably put a more powerful light bulb on there. Anyway, let's turn that fault light back down. So that that doesn't come on till about, I don't know, 12 volts or something like that. Right, well this thing's slowed down to an absolute crawl now. It's really not climbing up very quickly at all. Because it's actually quite gloomy now. Let's have a look at the sky. Yeah, usual story. Heavily overcast. Nothing doing. No sun on the horizon. No nothing doing. This is going to take ages to charge up. Right, well since the clouds aren't behaving themselves, uh, let's do this with a power supply. I've got one of the Minghe buck boosts set to uh, 18 volts, uh, 0.75 amps. I could raise that up a bit actually. Let's take that up to one amp. Yeah, I like that to be absolutely bang on one amp. Right, 18 volts, 1 amp, so let's switch that on, and that's 12.8 and climbing. Is it? Yes, it's still climbing. Okay, so when we get up to about 16, we should start seeing these LEDs come on, so let's uh, leave that pumping at, at 1 amp. That solar panel was rated at 0.8 amps, so even with full sun, it wouldn't have been this quick. So this is better. I'll sit and watch this for a bit. Of course, I'm not reading the exact voltage on the supercapacitors here because I've put this uh, shocky diode in there, but that's only going to be about um, 0.3 of a volt drop probably. So the supercapacitors are probably at about 13.2 now. But um, I've got these blue indicators here anyway, so I'll know when this thing gets up to full voltage. Right, this light's come on on the buck boost here. Uh, because it's gone over the threshold that I'd set this thing to. So let's um, turn that a couple of turns so that we don't have any problems with uh, that coming on. Otherwise it just slows down the charging. 14.8 we're at now. I might wind the current down on this actually because the solar panel I calculated 
uh, wouldn't overwhelm these protection circuits. So I probably should stick to that. Uh, let's go to current, so that's one amp. Let's take that down to 800 milliamps, which was what the uh, solar panel can kick out. So that's now constant current, the yellow light at 800 milliamps. Voltage is 15.3. Uh, I've just done the red insulation tape trick on the display. That works really well, doesn't it? That's totally visible now. Right, we're coming up to 16.2. Uh, not expecting these protection circuits to kick in until this is about 16.4, maybe 16.5. Oh, there they go. Oh, that's quite accurate, isn't it? Um, although that one is probably higher than all the others. So that must come on. Will that uh, take that capacitor down in voltage sufficiently to uh, turn this circuit off? and some other circuits on. Let's find out. Right, we've got three protection circuits kicked in now. 16.46, that might not go up. No, it's actually going down because there's enough uh, wattage being consumed in these resistors uh, that uh, the voltage is now stable. This lamp's also on on the back end. Actually, I could turn that off. Uh, let's turn that clockwise. Turn that off. Uh, four protection circuits are now on. Will the other two come on? Presumably they will because as these consume energy from the capacitors uh, that the lights are on, on, they the voltage on them should go down. If this is holding about steady, uh, then these two should the voltages should still be coming up. So we should get them all on in due course. That is trickling down just ever so slightly. But then we have got, um, I can't remember how many watts these were each. Oh, that one's now had enough. And that one's backed off. I would like to see these two come on and then I'll be happy that all the protection circuits are operating. So I've not seen um, that second one come on yet, which is a bit of a concern. Um, let's just check the voltages on there. So that first capacitor is at uh, 2.8, which is a tad high. This one though, well, the two added together, are at 5.2. So I don't think that second one has actually hit 2.7 yet, because two 2.7s would be 5.4, wouldn't it? So that one seems low, um, but it seems very low. I'm hoping that one wasn't sat there considerably negative uh, while this thing was shipped but I'll sit here and just wait for that second one to come on it should come on eventually because it is going to be charging up uh, 5.2 minus 2.9 whatever that is yeah this second one is quite low 2.37 but it is coming up Yes, that is coming up, so uh, I think it will get to 2.7, 2.8 eventually and that one should light its little protection LED. The others, those three there, are lighting their LEDs now. Yeah, that one must have been substantially negative. Or it has an enormous capacity, a much bigger capacity than the others. Something like that. I don't quite know why it's so low. Yeah, so there's the first one's protection circuit on, but still not seen the second. Really want to see that before I just let this thing uh, sit and protect itself. Yeah, I'm surprised they don't fit um, LEDs to these boards as standard because they're really essential. You need to see this thing protecting itself and they don't consume any power other than when... Is that first one on? No other than when the resistors are consuming power, so they don't really change the circuit in any way. Uh, yeah, they could just put little tiny PCB mounting LEDs on and then you could see uh, like number five there when the protection circuits kick in. It's really odd that they don't do that. Right, well the protection circuit for number two has finally come on. It's not on at the moment, it's gone back off. Um, and I measured the voltage across it and it is very high. I think the tolerance on that little voltage detector, it's the little 3-pin SOT23 device there, um, must be a bit high on that one, which is a bit alarming because it um, didn't come on until about 
2.85 and then it went off at about 2.74 um, it should go off at 2.7 um, the one on the far right actually went off at 2.6 something so um, there must be quite a wide tolerance on these things and certainly that uh, number two which has now come on I should measure it really uh, was really way over 2.7 volts uh, so I'm trying to get the DVM in and the light the lights gone off at, yeah 2.74 and now it's creeping back up because that protection circuit is off but yeah that one is a bit high and I'm just wondering if uh, that capacitor is not hasn't fared very well and uh, is a bit damaged which is why it took so much longer for that one to initially turn its protection circuit on than all the others I mean all the others had done theirs well at least 10 times each before that second one actually switched on so don't know quite what's going on there but maybe um, because that uh, voltage detector is set so high there is a bit of a problem I don't really know anyway I've seen uh, all of these turn their protection circuits on now so they are uh, all working so I can turn the output uh, on this device on let's just do that now I think we wind that anti-clockwise yeah and the little bulb has come on uh, so that's fine. There's still absolutely no sun, of course. Oh, well, I tell a lie. There's a tiny sliver of blue up there, but the sun's over there, stuck behind a big dark cloud. So no, nothing doing today. So I think I've had enough of this experiment now. Solar panel up there on that uh, greenhouse thing and the circuitry under that umbrella, because I was concerned at one point that it might rain and also I was using it to uh, darken the stuff down here a bit so that we could see those blue LEDs come on but I'm actually feeling quite cold now because uh, there's been no sun and when there's no sun it cools right down and uh, maybe when it's a little bit warmer I'll uh, come out and have another play with this uh, much bigger super capacitor bank but uh, that's it for today so cheerio <laughs>